everybody, Jeannie Young is back and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. I am so excited. Yet another day. Because today at the Young's house, Jeannie Young is going to show you all how easy it is to make delicious bread pudding. This bread pudding right here is so tasty. Easy to make, doesn't require a lot of ingredients and you know, make a Jeannie Young style, it's going to be so tasty. You all never had my bread pudding. You better make you some. Here are the lovely ingredients you will need. When it comes to making bread pudding, you will need some bread. So right here I have a nice Italian bread. We also have some brioche style sliced bread. And we also have that famous swirled bread. Sometimes it can be like a cinnamon raisin. This one here is French toast swirl. You're going to need some milk. You will also need some heavy whipping cream. Right here we have four large eggs. We're also going to use five eggs for a sauce that we're going to make today. You will need butter. You're also going to need one and a half cups of white sugar. You will need raisins or dry cranberries. You're also going to need a couple of spices so we can make this taste good. So we have vanilla extract. We have cinnamon and salt. It's just pink salt. Don't nobody freak out on me. And I have some extra sugar for a sauce that we're going to make. Gina Young is going to show you all how easy it is to make a delicious, it's a vanilla sauce. And we're going to pour it all over this bread pudding. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this really quick and simple, yet so tasty recipe. I'm so excited for this recipe. I have a 9 by 12 disposable baking dish. Yours doesn't have to be disposable if you don't choose to. Okay, so now one thing that we're going to start off doing is we need to cut our bread. Now here's the thing, you really don't have to cut the bread. You can pull the bread apart if you feel like it, okay? Just pull it apart into pieces. Me personally, I like to cut mine, okay? So we're just going to do a number like this. We're not trying to be perfect with the bread, it's just bread. It's okay if you mush and smash it. Okay, so this is an Italian loaf. Feel free to grab French bread or pretty much any kind of bread that you have. And believe it or not, you could even make a bread pudding out of donuts. You bet you could. If you make your bread pudding out of donuts, I suggest you use like a Krispy Kreme donut. That would be beautiful. So now that I have the bread, and don't cut the crust off into cubes, I'm going to then begin to start to put some of that bread into our baking dish that we're going to use. Now, we're going to do something really interesting. If you didn't purchase your bread, uh, let's say a week ago or a couple of days ago, and it's not stale, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of make it stale. And the way that we can do that is we can throw our bread into the oven and kind of dry it out a little bit. And so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to begin to cut the brioche. Let's move this out the way. Same thing, nothing special. Just into cubes, okay? Just like so in this manner, always keeping the crust on because the crust makes a great texture. And we're going to use that swirled bread as well, just like so. How simple. I'm going to continue to chop up all the bread. We're going to get it into that pan and we're going to put it in the oven 365 degrees just to get it nice and dried out. Our three different types of bread, nice and chopped up. Let's put it into the oven, 365 degrees, get it nice and dried out. The bread is in the oven, we're just drying it out. And if by chance you happen to open the oven and it's starting to get a little dark, don't worry about it, just take it out. But Gina, I know someone's gonna say this, but Gina, the bread at the bottom was not hard and dried out. It's okay, don't worry about it. We wanna get most of the bread nice and dried out, but if it all doesn't dry out, don't freak out about it. I, pro I promise you it's okay. Because years ago, I didn't even dry it out, okay? But I have found this new technique where it gives you a better texture, okay? Let's make a sauce, or not a sauce. This is what we're going to be soaking our bread in. Two cups of milk. We're also gonna need two cups of heavy whipping cream, okay? If I don't quite have, I, I need a little bit more. 
Just a little bit more. Ugh. Come on. Two cups of heavy whipping cream. This part is so simple. We're making somewhat of a custard, I'd like to say. Okay, we're going to put one and a half cup white granulated sugar. We're going to season it with a little bit of salt, believe it or not. When you're making a dessert, you need salt in it to brighten up the flavor. Okay, we're going to put some vanilla extract in. I never measured a vanilla. We're going to put some cinnamon in there. Don't be shy or don't skip on the vanilla. We will be putting four tablespoons of melted butter in, but I want to wait a little bit. I have the melted butter here, but right now, that melted butter is a little too hot. I don't want to make scrambled eggs because our next ingredient to go in is going to be four large eggs. So I want to crack these eggs, okay? And we're going to get our eggs in. I'm cracking them into a separate bowl. I got cinnamon on my fingers, but we can always wash that off, right? There's three, here's four, and it is large eggs. Making sure that you don't have any shells, let's get that in. Next thing we need to do, mix it all up, let that butter cool down a little bit, and then you're going to put that four tablespoons of melted butter right into the mixture. Just like so, pretty simple, right? When I come back, I'll show you what we're going to do next. Our butter has cooled down a little bit, but yet it's still melted. Go ahead and put it into the mixture. Here in about five minutes, we'll be taking our beautiful bread out of the oven, and we're going to put our bread, well, our bread's already in the bacon dish, excuse me. We're gonna pour this mixture on top of the bread, <clears throat> and we wanna let that mixture soak into the bread for as long as you want. But since we're doing a video today, we'll let it soak in for about a half an hour. Got the bread, it's beautiful, nice. You may be able to hear, crispy. And for the pieces it's not, you may get some pieces. This not, don't worry about it, I promise. Take the mixture, pour it in. Now even, sometimes you can make this the night before. You bet you can. Let it soak overnight if you have the time. But like I said, since I'm doing a video, I'm really only gonna let this soak for just about a half an hour, you know? And what you're aiming for is you want for the bread to really, you want for the bread to soak into this gorgeous custard just like so. If you want to, I'm gonna take my ring off. We're gonna just do a number just like this. And when I come back, I'll show you what we'll do next. It gets exciting. I want to talk about the raisins really quickly. Now, there has been times when I made this recipe and I soak my raisins in a little bit of cool water just to make them nice and plump. You can do that, but then again, you don't have to. Okay, so now I decided I'm just gonna put just a tiny bit in because my husband does not like raisins. But I wanna show you how I like to strategically place them. Okay, so I'm just gonna go like this. Just kind of push them in there, just a few here and there. You want a bite of them here and there, but you don't want them to overwhelm the situation. Okay, so that's how you do it. And then to finish right before it comes out of the oven, you can put some on the top. But I'm not doing a lot because he don't like raisins. Okay, so listen, we're going to get started on this vanilla sauce. It's quick and simple when I come back. So now, what we're going to do, we need to separate the egg yolk from the egg white. We will not be using the egg whites, but don't throw them away. You can always make an egg white omelet in the morning. But here's how I like to do it. So we're going to crack the egg, okay? And I'm going to crack it right into my hand, okay? And I'm going to loosen my fingers up a little bit and literally watch the whites fall out. And what I'm left with is this beautiful yolk. It has no more whites, okay? So then we can take our yolk that we're going to need and put it into this bowl. How easy. We'll do one more for the person in the back that's going to tell me, Gina didn't get to see it. Well, this one here is a surprise. We got two egg yolks. You see that? Loosen your fingers up a little bit and let the whites slide out. Okay. All we want is yolk. If you keep the whites, your recipe will not turn out right. I'm gonna do the rest of these eggs just like so. It's five eggs. And when I come back, I'll show you what we're gonna do next. 
We're going to cover the bread pudding, put it into the oven, and I'll tell you the perfect time to take the foil off. Halfway through the process, we'll keep the foil on. The other half, we'll take it off. So now with the five egg yolks, we're going to add one cup of granulated white sugar, okay? We're going to mix it together. When you first begin to mix it, you think, oh no, what happened? Did I do it wrong? Nope, you didn't. And it's going to be kind of thick and you're going to think, oh no, what's happening? But very quickly, the sugar and the egg will begin to thicken up and liquefy. I'll show you when I come back. So now let's get started on our sauce. We're already doing the sauce, but let's really get started. Okay, so now one cup of milk. 2% milk, any kind of milk you have, just don't use buttermilk. We're going to put it into a saucepan here, just one cup. And I want for this to come up to a really slight boil. Look at there, I got a piece of, <laughs> I got a piece of bread in there. Get out of there. So now what we're going to do, we need to heat up that milk until you start to see little teeny tiny bubbles, not a roiling boil, not a big roiling boil. As soon as you see them little tiny bubbles, I'm going to tell you what to do next. But until then, come back in on the egg yolks and the sugar. You see how it's beginning to thin out a little bit? You're going to really get to see here in a few minutes. Just be patient and you keep on stirring. So now remember I told you all this will begin to liquefy and some really interesting stuff will happen with this. Look at that. It's interesting, right? It's like a miracle happens between the egg yolks and the sugar, and I love it. Now let's talk about something really quickly. It's very important that you don't get this milk too hot. Guess why? Because you're going to turn these eggs into scrambled eggs. So make sure it's a very slight boil. Once that happens, we're going to do something called temper the eggs. We need to take a little bit of this warm liquid. We're going to mix it in with this eggs and sugar. And then the eggs and sugar will come up to the temperature of the milk. And then we put it all in with the milk, OK? But I'll show you. I'll, I'll, I'm going to show you when I come back. So now we're going to take that milk that has came up to a slight boil. We're going to pour some in, just a little bit in. And then right away, you got to start stirring vigorously. OK, I am left-handed. So that is what tempering is. I'm going to leave that fork in there because I'm going to get that all off of the fork. How easy we brought the temperature of these egg yolks up to the temperature of the milk that's been boiling. That is called tempering. So what do you do next, Gina? Well, we're going to turn around. And now we're able to put all of this into the pan without it turning into scrambled eggs. Get it all out. Once you have it all out, you stir. You bring it up to another slight boil, and then we're going to put some vanilla in there. You can put a vanilla bean in there even. Turn your heat on to medium, and you stay nearby, and you keep on stirring. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to whisk in one cup of heavy whipping cream, and that is your vanilla sauce. Mixture is, you can take, you can see it. Look at that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put one cup of the heavy whipping cream. And we are looking for this to begin to thicken up to where if we do like this on the back of our spoon, our sauce will separate and you'll see a line. But if you do like this and it does not separate, it's not done. So we're almost there. Yes, it's staying apart, but I want it to stay apart at the bottom as well. And that term is called nappe. Okay, so now keep on going. It does look a little frothy. You can take that frothiness off by skimming it off. I never worry about it. Let's keep on cooking it. When I come back, we have vanilla sauce, Gita Young style. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. My sauce is nice and thick. When we put our finger on the spoon, the sauce stayed separate. Okay, so that means it's the perfect thickness that we're looking for. So now I got a little sifter here. You're going to need one. But you don't have to. If you don't mind a little lumps, then don't worry about the sifter. Many, many times, many years ago, and even all the way up until last year, I never worried about a sifter. You don't have to. But if you want to, you know, be perfect, well, use the sifter and it'll just take any little tiny bits that may be left in the sifter. Okay, so it looks thin right now, but just let it set. It's going to thicken up vanilla sauce. Let's let the bread pudding cook. Next time I come back, we're going to be slicing down into that baby. 
Okay, everyone, so our bread pudding has came out of the oven. I did cook it on 355 degrees for one and a half hours. Now, at the beginning of the cooking process, I put foil on it. Halfway through, I took the foil off so that it can brown up. If at any time you feel like the top is getting too dark, then what you're going to simply do, just put foil back on. Take a look. And I did put a couple more um, uh, raisins on top. Beautiful, beautiful. How am I able to tell when my bread pudding is done? Well, I'm going to show you. I like to go through the side. Go through the side and do this and see what happens when you do that. If you get this texture when you pull it away from the side, it is done. Now, when it comes out of the oven, it's going to be real, real puffy like this, and then quickly it'll kind of shrink down. That's supposed to happen. Now, before we plate this up, Got to let it cool down a little bit so it can stand up nice and tall for us. And the sauce, it's thickened up and it's beautiful. And I did um, skim off a lot of those bubbles that were on there. Look at this vanilla sauce. Ooh, I can't wait. Stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know what Gina Young is doing in this kitchen. Let's see a quick prayer, because when we come back, we're, we're going to taste this. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful dessert today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, what I want you all to see, I want you to see this consistency. Uh, <laughs> oh, little crispy edges, nice, soft, and supple, and gorgeous. Listen here. Jeannie Young's all excited. Take a look. Here's our plate. This is our plate, and this. It's for you all, your family, your friends, anyone you make this for. They're going to go nuts over the, oh my goodness, girl, you done started something up in here. Oh, wait, make you some, make you some Gina Young style. God bless each and every one of you. I'll be back and we're going to try it. That's it. That is it. Oh, you're going to be swinging your feet smacking your lips and just rubbing your stomach because this here this is what you need amen once again to my beautiful prayer let's do this now see i like mine's at room temperature and or i like mine's cold and i like to heat the sauce up you know oh <laughs> hold on hold on as if i didn't have enough sauce now we do I don't know how hot this is. I might not want to try it. I don't want to burn the daylights out of my mouth. Look at this. Make you some. God bless and good night. One more take. One more take. Come. One more take. Hoo-wee.